and welcome to Waking Up the Masses here on Truth Frequency Radio. I am once again your host, Robert Bruce. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Crazy things. <clears throat> crazy things and really just, if you want to call it, you could call it crazy, you could call it insane. But to look at it, more like scripted things that we constantly have to... There's that dog, hey. Sound effects in the back, my dog that has allergies. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Okay. It should be over in a second. It should be over in a second. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Welcome to Waking Up the Masses. I am your host, Robert Bruce. And we live in, when I say crazy it and insane, it's the actions that people take every day and how they're manipulated by their emotions. See, that's our big problem, guys, is our emotions. We're, we're led here. We're led there. By our nose, like, like an animal with a nose ring. Come here, man. We're going to make you do this. We need you to watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I know you haven't seen this in a while, but watch this. We need to get you, we need to get your emotions up. Um, humanity, humanity matters. Humanity matters. We're humans. It's our species. But yet, let's ring our, let's get the whole hand wringing emotional thing going by showing one little picture. You know, I, I truly, this is why I despise social media. You want to keep showing me a picture of a dead child? And if that's not bad enough, do you know how many dead people there were? And this is, has to do with the, uh, with the individuals that have been kicked out of Syria and other countries, but do you know how many dead individuals there were on that beach? But let's keep showing the toddler. Let's keep showing the toddler because what does that do that shapes the minds of man? It shapes the minds of man as if they needed shaping already. Hungarian police, they show pictures of individuals being removed from a train. Individuals with, with scripted photos, some woman with her child and her husband, they're laying down on the tracks. Don't think I'm, don't think I'm without compassion. But logic and common sense have to be used here. Logic and common sense have to be used here. Uh, so many people hold the Native Americans up in this country and say, oh, you know, look what we, look what we did, look what we did to their lifestyle, so forth and so on. What do you think happened? Let's go back to the 1400s and the 15th century. 1400s, the Battle of Blood Mountain. About 50 miles away from here, man. 50, 60 miles away. Not even, we yeah, about 50. The Battle of Blood Mountain. The Cherokee up one side, the Creek up one side. Thousands. Thousands. Probably pre-Civil War. The bloodiest battle. And it took place in one little area. The bloodiest war to ever take place on the soil. Well, the bloodiest battle. All over this mountain. All over this mountain. And what was this about? Do you think, do you think you could actually be a Choctaw, Cree, or Shawnee and just go in and say, hey, Cherokee, we're coming in, man. Hey, we're coming in. We want to be part of one of those, uh, we want to be part of the clans, man. We want to be part, part of one of those Anis. We're coming in. What do you think happened? What do you think happened? The Navajo and the Apache at each other's throat. All tribes around this country kicking butt. Long before European influence, kicking each other's butt. Why? The desire for land or protecting their land. The desire for land or protecting their land. But we're told... And, you know, using the whole individuals coming coming into the country from Mexico, we're told, well, you just need to have some compassion. Look at these people. Sometimes compassion can be one of the worst things that we can allow. Not true compassion. Not true compassion that really starts deep in your heart. That kind. But the compassion that has influenced the ideas that are thrown at us. Over and over, Obama up in, Obama's up in Alaska taking selfie after selfie. The beta male president. <laughs> As if they, you know, truly in the end, these puppets, 
Because a puppet, a puppet truly is a puppet, a human being that is puppeted. That's a beta male. It's not even an omega, man. Far from being an alpha, not even an omega that serves a purpose. It is a beta male. Which is the mentality. Why do you think this guy, why do you think every, you know, so, not everyone. Why do you think so many people went crazy over Barack Obama? Because so many individuals are dumbed down. They have become, they become wimps for lack, for lack of mental, mental wimps. Beta males. You see it around you every day. You know what it is, man. You've seen it. People say, okay. Okay. I guess it just has to be like that. I can't get past it. Okay. Just give in. This is the modern day spirit of the modern day mind controlled man is just to give in. And what causes this? <clears throat> what causes this mind control and causes man to give in? And what, what wires him up basically to keep, keep getting put in different, you know, in different pastures, man. Put you in this pasture, put you in that pasture, give you all a Judas goat. Next thing you know, <laughs> off to the slaughterhouse, off to the slaughterhouse. But it's the tyranny. But it's but it's a beautiful tyranny, I guess you could say. Both sides want to bring in this beautiful tyranny on this idea of it'll be better for everyone. Don't you see the don't you see the whole idea of, of uh, the dogmatic idea of the church monarchy authority on one side and the so called. Not the real anarchist, but the so-called, uh, well, it was an anarch anarcho-libertarian. This would be, this would be, um, basically what your, uh, Jacobins, your Freemasons were pre-French Revolution in France. The so-called, this idea, this, you know, they allegedly, they allegedly, remember, they only want freedom. They only want freedom, unfettered access to knowledge. The big old love, love, toleration for everything. Sounds good, doesn't it? Truly, it's, you know, the model's great. Freedom, unfettered access to knowledge of any kind, compassion for your neighbor, tolerating anything anybody does because it's them. The idea of true freedom, but it's not what it is. Truly, this is not what it's all about. And you can look back through history and see this, whether it is the monarchy or the church. <clears throat> the monarchy and the church, those with that kind of mind. Oh, I'm about the, don't you love it? Oh, I'm about the Constitution. But you can't, but, 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 but I'm not going to issue a marriage license because it's, uh, it goes against my whole theocratic ideas. See, the dual mind breach takes control. The dual mind breach is able to push man in certain directions. Robert K.G. Temple, one of his books, he is one of their advocates. He, he's one of the guys that's right on board with uh, this idea of, uh, shall we say, the false idea of freedom. The libertarian trig bag. He says, quote, the Platonic tradition in the broader sense and its Gnostic and, and heretical overtones and its myriad of manifestations in later ages as such bizarre and fascinating figures as, as Giardiano Bruno, Marcillo Ficino, John D, and not to mention the troubadours of, uh, of Provence and the massacre of tens of thousands of the Albigeans in France and the Knights Templar and an infinite range of hopeless causes over two and a half millennia. Platonism in hopeless causes over, I mean, excuse me, Platonism in the general sense is a creed which denies creed, an anti-institutional tradition. It insists on nothing by way of doctrine, doctrinal dogma. It is truly free. It has no pope. It terrifies those weaker mentalities and which crave a shuttered belief system. They always try to destroy it, but succeed only in destroying individuals and individual movements within the larger tradition. This is the typical propaganda, my friends. This is the typical propaganda that's uh, passed on down to us by the powers that be. They throw it out there, you know, it's like the carrot on the stick. It's like the carrot on the stick. They throw it out there, but what truly is it? It's a manipulation. 
Today on the show, in this next segment, well, the next segment uh, coming up at the, after the next break and for the rest of the show, we have Mr. Shane Radliff of Liberty Under Attack. True anarchist. Really, in my opinion, true anarchist. This guy believes in, believes in the, what Mr. Robert Temple, Robert K.G. Temple was saying out of one side of his mouth, but really thinking another. Truly believes in this, that there should be unfettered, that there should be freedom, should be unfettered access to knowledge, love, and staying out of other people's damn business, man. <laughs> But beware, beware. There are always those out there that will throw this out there, but what do they want? They want another system of control that they can be either control or they can be enmeshed in because they do not truly understand what freedom is. So what Robert K.G. Temple, what he was doing is this classic statement throughout time, throughout time that many of these secret societies, the propaganda that they have thrown out there. But what is this deception? Look at who he's talking about that were martyred. The Albigensians, the Templars, all their little persona, man, all the other little persona that they throw out there. So look what they've done so bad to these people. Do you not see the same mentality in this day and time? Someone does some crazy stuff and, and something bad happens to them. They're like, oh, my God, what happened to this person? It's like they were a jackball, man. They weren't truly using that unfettered access to knowledge which gave them wisdom and common sense and reason to, to approach things. No, what they were doing is going along with the program. The same typical program that you see everyone else going along with, and that's the program of, okay, that's what we call it here, man. It's, a, it's an interesting program. They say, well, you know, truly, most people in this country, hey, what political persuasion are you? They should say, okay. <laughs> But Mr. Robert K.G. Temple, this propaganda, make, like I said, makes heroes out of the Templars. And let's not forget, you know, history History usually is given in extremes. History or sometimes conspiracy theories are given in extremes. There was a good group. You had your sort of uh, <clears throat> northern sect of Templars, which tended to be more Gnostic. They were more of the Slavic countries and Nordic countries, still deeply immersed in this dualistic Gnosticism. And then you had your southern, your French Templars, so forth and so on, which for the mo most part were Christian. Desmond Seward, writing in his book, talking about the Templars, Monks of War. He says, and, and um, he says, "quote their their contribution to the overthrow of the church, the church's attitude towards usury. No medieval institution did more for the rise of capitalism." Now you realize the Templars were the big money guys back then. They loan you some money, man. Here, have some money. Here's some money, but you know we need we need a lot of interest. We we need some interest. Because it serves our interest to get that interest. <laughs> oh, what do we do, man? What do we do with so many people wrapped up in all these ideas that they believe are right? And if they look back, and they look back, at, <clears throat> excuse me, they look back and they actually see what's going on. But it was in your face, I talk about this dual mind breach where they put the information out there on both sides. The cross-threaded mind screw, as I, as I have coined it. Well, they put the ideas on both sides. Remember, back at that time, everyone knew what the Templars, they, they knew what these guys were up to. But also, the church made no bones, guys. They made no bones about the authority and the hierarchy that they claimed and the despotism they wished to put upon the people. So which way, you know, which way do we go? Which way do we go? So, as many of these different groups, the Templars and other groups, these... Um, these Gnostic occultists, whatever you want to call them, they decide, they realized, hey, we better hide our true aims. Cause look what happened to us. Look what happened to us. You know, next thing you know, throw us on a fire. Friday 13th, all kind of stuff. <clears throat> Friday the 13th, 1307. But all this stuff. <clears throat> and what happens? They hide their true agenda. They try, they hide their true structure behind degrees. But publicly, now they decide to swear that they are, what? <clears throat> they are against the whole of any kind of evil. Gotta get Satan! 
Gotta get Satan. Lovely how that whole adversary word, that Semitic adversary, the word that means adversary, Hasatan, Satan, so forth and so on, has been made into what? A devil. You realize in the original Christian teachings that did not exist? The devil came about. This whole idea of a devil in contrast to a creative power came about with Gnosticism. It came about with Gnosticism. If you're going to believe that there is a devil, then you have to start believing that you that half of you is evil. <clears throat> Truly. And that was the idea. That was the idea. You go back, I mean, way before way before the Templars, you go back to the Manichaeans, Mains. Two hundred and something B A D. This guy that started the Manichaeans, this was his idea of pull people in all kinds of different directions. Eventually you can make a fanatic that becomes an extremist to a certain in degree, he becomes so slowly through degrees, becomes an extremist in the direction that he is pushed, or he is flattered to go into. So, what do they do? You know, on the on the surface, what do they do? You know, it's interesting, even with the Templars, how they did it. You know, the little coin you see, one, you know, two of them riding one horse. The whole claim of uh, celibacy. <laughs> the whole claim of. Uh, of, you know, getting, you know, saying no to any kind of material ownings, material belongings. The Albigen, the Al, Albigensians, I hate pronouncing that word. Um, these individuals, they also swore a life of celibacy and also asceticism. You know, they needed to Avoid these all these entanglements with the flesh. You will find that the founder of the Knights Templar was one of these guys. You will find also that during the say the siege of Jerusalem by Saladin, this uh, I cannot remember his name to say, to save my life right now, but he was also a part of one of these Gnostic cults. We don't need all this. We don't need all this. Uh, shall we say storytelling in this day and time? All of these things have taken their own persona in this day and time. Think about it. You've got the Templars. What are they, what are they claiming? And then, what are they claiming? Oh, and then on up, those that claim that they were still doing the Templars bidding like the Jacobins. What do they claim? Oh, liberty, fraternity, equality. But was it true? Was it truly true? Truly true. Was it true? Or were these so-called perfect eye, the perfected ones, the illumined ones, simply playing the same game that they've played throughout history? The one hand they shake you, in one hand they shake your hand, and the other one they punch you in the throat. With one hand they shake your hand, the other one they punch you in the throat. Seems to happen over and over. Many individuals in the political realm. Many individuals in the political realm. Just look at them. Look at him. Look at look at Rand Paul. Rand, not Ron, because Ron is not Rand, and Rand is not Ron. Run, run, run. No, it's not Rand. No, not at all. But this guy is such a neocon, such a neocon, and I don't even know what kind of clothing he's wearing. <laughs> but a big-time neocon, but he will sit there, and he will take the mantle of saying, freedom, 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 expressing it, throwing it out there. But what would he do if he became president? Think about it. What's he going to do? He wouldn't even, I saw a video the other day that he wouldn't even, uh, someone was asking him about, he was saying, we're not going to help this country. You know, we need to quit funding this country and giving them our money. We need it here. And someone asked him about Israel. It's like, he shut up. He wouldn't say a, he wouldn't say a dang thing. <clears throat> I sometimes wonder, when I talk about this dualistic mind breach, the cross-threaded mind screw, is this what Ron Paul and Rand Paul were all about? Think about that. Think about how – look at your social media feed and look how many people are involved so much because it says Paul and the first name starts with an R and it's one syllable. It must be Ron. No, it's Rand. No, it's Rand. Rand says he can, but he really can't. But was this just a big setup? We must remember that Ron Paul spent so much time in where? Where did he spend a buttload of time? In the, in the Congress. He was a career politician. People say, oh, he was a doctor too. No, he was a career politician. But he threw out the ideas, didn't he? Liberty, fraternity, you know, not the exact ones he said, but liberty, fraternity, equality. 
Now you get the sun. Now you get the sun, man. Same thing. Same as, hey, you remember the talking head? Same as it ever was, right? Same as it ever was. But if you think about, you know, if you go back and you look at some of these old writings from the days of the Albigensians and the Templars, when they consider themselves the perfect eye, who did they say they would not reveal their secrets to? The imperfect eye, the imperfect ones. So since the priest class, whatever the priest class may be, it might be an economic class in this day and time. Since they are perfect, man, since they are the ones that are perfect, now what are they? Think about it. With your politicians now, these guys back then, what are they? They are above the so-called law. But who puts the bar out? We put the bar out. We put that bar of where, you know, what you can do, this, that, and the other thing. Um, it's one reason I wanted to have Mr. Uh, Radcliffe on today. Um, you, very intelligent young man. I look at the so-called, I know he's probably listening, hates to be called this, but I look at the so-called millennials out there. My gosh, we have a bunch of brain dead people. But Mr. Radliff, <clears throat> as well, you can, uh, let me get, I'll give you his web, website, libertyunderattack.com, libertyunderattack.com. He has a broadcast every Sunday, has a broadcast every Sunday with his co-host, uh, Matt Kestner. Very intelligent man. He has, uh, he has truly grasped the idea of what freedom is. So I wanted to bring him on here today. I've had him on here before. I'm sure you've heard him. Uh, should be, man, should be an excellent uh, rest of the show. <clears throat> but who set up this model? you got to wonder, man, who set up this model? If you listened to yesterday's show or the day before, I talked about our modern-day secret societies is based, the template is based on the assassins. But where did they get their ideas from? These go back to the old Persian Gnostics. These go back to the old Persian Gnostics. Man, it was simple. It's a very simple story. Rise of Islam. The whole idea of conquering different areas and spreading their religion around. You know what? The people in Persia are kind of pissed off. They're kind of pissed off and for, for quite a long time, quite a long, long time, you know, what have they been involved in? Um, by now, their religion. And everything, you know, the religion, their beliefs, it has been corrupted. They have the priesthood. They have the perfect eye. And everyone else is the imperfect eye. But this class learned. Hey, you know what? We can, uh, let's just poke a bunch of holes in their theory of religion. And then when they are completely broken down and they are full of doubt, then we can influence them and tell them, hey, you know what? It's actually about this. And if you examine it closer, it's really about this. You know, the degrees of the assassins are fascinating. The degrees of the assassins, or the Eastern Ishmaelis as they were actually called, um, these were, these were fascinating. First you were, you know, first you were sort of flattered. It's like, hey, what do you believe about your religion? Blah, blah, blah. And you made real comfortable, believe that, and went on through the degrees. Eventually they start telling you who the hidden masters are. They say it's like Noah and Jesus and Moses and Abraham, uh, Ali, Ali, uh, so forth and so on. A lot of these different heads of religion. And Mohammed. Later on in the degrees, they are taught that no, no, these guys aren't the, these guys are not the real thing. It is actually this other group of guys. <clears throat> and then later, in some of the final degrees, you're taught that the Grand Master, well, now you are God. You are the perfect eye, but the most perfect eye is the Grand Master. Always gotta have a Grand Master, man. Gotta have the guy, gotta have that guy sitting in the east, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have that East Sitter. Indeed, indeed. And this is what we have in our day and time. It is a big mishmash and it is a big convoluted, uh, mess of mind control. Which, once again, going back to Mr. Uh, Radliff, um, you see a young, I see a young man. He's able to, he's been able at a very early, or young age, at a very young age, to break free of all this nonsense. So, we'll be talking to him. I should have Mr. Should have, uh, either at the beginning of the next segment or later, should have my co-host in here with me, Mr. John LeBang. We'll see about that. <clears throat> um, 
but in in reality, what was going on with the Templars behind closed doors? What was going on? Uh, and that is speculative. A lot of that about the Templars is speculative. But the uh, Albigensians, what were what were these guys doing behind closed doors? The so called perfecti that believe that, hey, we're heading towards godhood. We are heading towards godhood. No one can be more perfect than us. But behind closed doors, the idea of their gluttony, their orgies. And so the lower orders, the lower orders were not allowed into this. You weren't known. You were still, you believed you were this uh, pious ascetic guy. You had renounced all kinds of material things. All, you know, you had renounced all, you know, the material war, world, so forth and so on. But in, in secret, you had your riches. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, man. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, it always, it always seems throughout history, whatever you want to call it, it always seems to take over. We'll be right back with Mr. Shane Radliff from LibertyUnderAttack.com. Hang in there, guys. You're listening to Waking Up the Masses right here on Truth Frequency Radio. Turns out negative facts added to Senator's Wikipedia biographies are deleted much quicker than positive ones. The study done by two political scientists, one at the University of California, the other at Yale University, monitored the Wikipedia pages of U.S. senators. The researchers added facts to the pages and tracked whether they were removed. They found negative facts were 36% more likely to be removed within 12 hours and 29% more likely to be removed within three days. The study concluded there was strong evidence of what it called an editorial bias toward positivity. Correspondent Linda Kenyon on Capitol Hill. South Carolina prosecutor says she will seek the death penalty for a white man charged with killing nine black churchgoers. Prosecutors filed court papers today saying they would pursue the death penalty in the case of 21-year-old Dylan Roof. More details at srnnews.com. And we're back here on Waking Up the Masses. Host Robert Bruce joined today by Mr. Shane Radcliffe. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you doing, sir? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I will. I will let you uh, tell the people where you uh, where your website is, what it's, what it's about, so forth and so on. Have at it. Okay. All right. Uh, well, my name is Shane Radliff. I'm the host of Liberty Under Attack Radio. Um, the website is libertyunderattack.com. We're, at, we're on every Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Time at fprnradio.com. Uh, we talk about uh, a lot of stuff. Um, we have uh, one of our frequent uh, uh, one of our frequent guests is uh, um, he studies he studies law. He's not a lawyer, but he studies law. And we do a lot of uh, uh, we've done broadcasts on, like the fourth uh, the administrative agencies the for the uh, fourth oh come on they don't government. count. He's got to be a lawyer now. He's got to be oh, just for it to count for him for it to make any sense. <laughs> he doesn't have his magic card. No, you're fine. You're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you're all right. Uh, but yeah, I mean we we go through some uh, some stuff like that. I just finished my adventures in Illinois law series. Um, I mean, for that, I literally just went to McLean County board meetings, uh, spectated criminal court proceedings, things like that. Um, witnessing uh, tyranny firsthand, I, I've, I've noticed that a lot of these, uh, um, a lot of the older folks, uh, they like to tell the younger generation that, oh, you guys just aren't involved enough. If you're involved, you 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 love the political system. And I was like, well, let me go test that out here. Why don't we? And uh, yeah, complete opposite. Um, yeah, yeah, you gotta, you know, you don't know, you don't really understand. You you can't understand the joy of that being ass raped until you get ass raped, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, we talk a lot about the um, that sort of thing, um, law, Illinois law, um, and uh, also uh, I guess so within the past six months or so, we've kind of branched into um, into uh, anarchism, kind of as you explained in the first uh, in the first segment there. Um, and uh, for the past couple of months, I've just been interviewing people 
um, maybe not a couple of months, but at least for a month, it kind of feels like a lot longer than that. But I'm um, trying to get a lot of different perspectives on on anarchism because I mean everyone's uh, um, got a little bit of a different interpretation of it because it's not, I guess, centralized like a. Uh, um, like the GOP or liberals or anything like that. It's just kind of wherever, wherever one's path takes them, so to speak. And we will, and I'm sure you'll agree, you'll see a lot of people that will throw the word out there. And, you know, so many interpretations of it, but a lot of people will throw the word out there, but then they're ready to go f- vote for Rand Paul. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's a major issue. And I've, uh, I guess I've been seeing that a lot more recently. Um, proclaimed, proclaimed, uh, eighth, or uh, pro- proclaimed, uh, anarchist saying they're going to go vote for Rand Paul. And it's yeah. like, it's, uh, anarchist voting is like an atheist praying. So it's, it's very, there's a, definitely a big issue with, uh, the, uh, consistency. Um, there isn't much. <laughs> and, and you have, I, I've been watching some of your videos, guys. You can, you have your YouTube linked up on your website, right? Uh, yep. All of the links are on there. Yep. All of the links are on there. You can find all the other pages. And I've watched some of your, I've watched some of your stuff. Um, trying to, you know, basically go on the route to be acknowledged and relinquish your, yourself from being a 14th Amendment citizen, right? Um, to, to some extent, yeah. I mean, it, there's, there's a couple different versions of, uh, uh, I guess there's a couple different uh, viewpoints of, of anarchism. There's people that just don't see that the state exists, um, and then there's the, the ones that do. But they would rather be gone. Um, so I, I guess it's it's more so not even I, I would think I would say even goes further than that. It's just the um, uh, for me personally, I don't recognize um, um, I don't recognize uh, the state. It's just a group of a group of men that have uh, claimed the right to rule and to uh, abuse uh, its citizenry. So I don't I just don't even recognize it in general. Indeed, and that's what it, that's. Uh, but you know it's there. Oh yeah, you can you, yeah, you can tell it's there. Yeah, there's you know it's there. That, that's that's one one thing I find within some of the uh, anarchist community that they want to complete. It's the, the, the there's the ostrich anarchist. Do you know they want to stick their head in the sand? Of course, we know for human beings that our head in the sand is actually we're on our knees. And what happens when we get on our knees? So bad things happen. Bad things happen. It's either over the barrel or something else, man. You get. You turn into a Lewinsky or something like that. It all turns bad. It all turns bad. But yeah, I noticed this. There's there's a lot that say, "Well, I just don't acknowledge it." Well, that's like that's like someone coming to my house with a bob bat and they're ready to knock the door in and and, and brain me. But I yeah, say, I well, you know, <clears throat> I don't acknowledge that people want to do that kind of stuff to me because uh, you know it's just not part of my paradigm. So therefore, and I find this within the conspiracy community a lot. Also, a lot of people want to acknowledge things. <clears throat> Excuse me. They get stuck in their, they get stuck in their own little templates, their own little paradigms. And next thing you know, they're wondering, oh, what happened? Yeah. Why, why is it like this? Yeah, well, it's like that because you allowed it to become like that. I and that's one thing I really like about you. You're active. Okay. You, you're active. You're not just a keyboard warrior. It's not out there doing stuff. Not just doing a radio show. You're actually active. You get out there and you do these things. Um, there was a. Now I wanted to get your take on this. I know recently. You took a little uh, trip to was some kind of Liberty Fest, was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, at the beginning of August, I attended the Midwest uh, Peace and Liberty Fest 3 up in uh, Delton, Michigan. Yep. What was your, what was your take on um, the different facets of many people, that, of uh, the different groups of people that you met there and their take on what true freedom is? Well, that was, that was kind of interesting. I, I, I live in the commune state of Illinois and, uh, um, I, I've never really found anyone like mine. Even when I was, even before I found, found anarchism, I still couldn't find anybody. Um, so now I definitely can't find anybody, but I went up there and, um, it was probably like, uh, I, I'm guessing like 95%, uh, um, uh, anarchist volu- volunteerist. Um, and there may have been one or two, uh, I guess, uh, reformists. Um, people who still believe in the political system, but overall it was pretty much just, pretty much just anarchists. And it was really, really, it was, it was a, a euphoric experience, I guess you could say. Um, I've never been around people that, uh, that understand the non-aggression principle that are against the initi- initi- initiation of force, uh, and that respect, uh, self-ownership. And that's, that includes, uh, one's body too. Um, so it was, it was a really, really amazing experience. So lots of good talks on, um, on various subjects. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm definitely planning on going there next year, and I also want to. There's, there's actually a lot of a lot more Liberty Fest than you would think. I know there's, there's, there's. I think there was like five or six this summer, so I'm gonna try to go on a little tour and, and hit up more of them because it was, uh, it was a fantastic experience, and I definitely, uh, um, I definitely grew, um, I guess mentally from that experience. So, so you say communist state of Illinois? Why you say that? 
<laughs> well, <laughs> good question. I actually released uh, um, an article a couple of months ago um, titled The Communist State of Illinois, Voting Does Not Work in Analysis. Um, and I, I've called it that for a while. I mean, the, the gun control laws are just uh, ridiculous here, especially up in Chicago and the surrounding suburbs. Um, but even uh, down here, it's it's not easy to get concealed and carry. Um, additionally, I mean, just look at all the corruption in Chicago um, and uh, um, how much of a, a crap hole that place is. Um, but, uh, yeah, I analyzed the voting in Chicago, too. And uh, uh, the Bands Have Power Index, the uh, power, the voter voter power index for each Illinoisan voter is point zero zero one one. Um So, like, I, I've looked into a lot of different facets of, of the communist state of Illinois. And by living here, um, I, I do see uh, – um, I mean, I, I don't live in Chicago, so I don't see it as bad. But it's it's definitely still there. It's definitely still there. So let me get your opinion on something. We have, you know, out there in the mainstream media, one of the things, and of course they want want everybody to watch this while they go off and do their dirty deeds. What do you think about the lady in? Use that word use loosely. What do you think about the lady in Kentucky that says, "Well, you know, according to my beliefs, I don't think I should have to marry." Her. I mean, I don't think you need a you don't need a, you don't get a marriage license. I'm sure you're going to have the same opinion on this as me, but. Well, what do you think about this? And then the other side saying, but, but it's the law. It's the law now, and you've got to follow it. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a couple different avenues here. Like if it was um, – I know there was that instance with the baker that refused to serve the gay couple. Um, that's private business. They can serve – they can choose to serve or not serve whoever they want to. But this lady, she works for the, the local government. Like she doesn't really have much of a choice. Um, I was talking to, talking about this with uh, one of my colleagues a couple nights ago, and um, – if she really wanted to make us, if she really did want to stand up for her religion, um, she should have quit her job. Um, cause she's, she's gonna go through the whole ringer of, uh, the injustice system. Um, I, I, I mean, obviously she has the right to her political beliefs, or her religious beliefs, excuse me, but, uh, she works for the government. She, re- she doesn't have a choice. She doesn't have a choice of whether to enforce those, enforce that, enforce that or not to enforce it. She just has to do it. Well, I think it's the typical, what I call, you know, the typical neocon thing that we see in this day and time where, you know, they'll scream constitution, constitution, constitution until it goes, until it has to do with their theocratic ideas. And then even though they scream constitution, actually behind that, the, the word that's sort of concealed that they don't understand is theocracy, theocracy, theocracy. Mm-hmm. And the insane thing to me about the whole process is a license. A license. People cry out for a license. Oh, you can't have one like I do. Oh, no, I want one like you have. No, no, you can't have the light. You can't have permission like I do. No, no, please give me permission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's I, I screamed bloody murder, bloody murder about that on my show right after that happened. And it's like so, I see all of these, uh, all of these uh, mindless people on Facebook. Just uh, they switch their image, their profile picture to the like the rainbow and all of that weird stuff. Uh-huh. And, and uh, um, for me, it's just like okay, so, so now gays have the right to ask for permission from the state to get married. I don't see that as much of a win. I don't know about you. <laughs> no, you, you become you become a sl- you become a slave like everybody else now. You become a slave like everyone else now. Um, yeah, the whole baking thing that really gets me. I'm just like, let's see, what would I do as a person that really wants to be make money and you know believes in a free market? What would you do? Hmm. I would go as a straight person. As a straight person. I think I might go set up if I was a baker. I go set up a bakery in a gay community. <laughs> it's like, hey, yeah. I will. But I would. I've been married and divorced two times. I've gone through the whole slave system twice, and I remember my baker on both wedding. You know, for the wedding cake was. Uh, oh man, he was. I mean, he <laughs> he was quite. He was quite animated, shall we say? But he he was gay. Never, never seem to have a problem there with anything. This is, uh, you know, it's all about exchanging goods, and you're exactly right. As a private business, you have a right. I believe that, I believe that gay baker that I used when I got married, I believe that he should have the right to say, you know, I really don't feel like baking a cake for a straight person. Really, you know, I don't, I don't want to bake a cake for a straight person. I'm, this is the way I live, and I believe it's, I believe it's the way you should live, and I don't really want to do that. So nobody really under you know examines these things, and I believe really, <clears throat> truly in the whole big mishmash of things that what we're looking at is a certain sort of dualistic mind control. 
if we keep people slung back and forth, just going back to the whole neocon idea, where they want to proclaim Constitution, 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 which most of them have never read it. They just read the Bill of Rights. True. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they, they don't read the part that tells everything the government gets to do. <laughs> There's the 20-something powers delegated to Congress right before it gives them the power to legislate in all cases whatsoever. Yeah, right, so right. <laughs> and and the, the whole idea of, uh, you know, you, they, they get to tell you what they want, and a lot of people don't realize – they, a lot of people think that Bill of Rights came about because of uh, the British. Oh, no. Oh, it's anti-federalists. No, no. It came about because of something called Shays Rebellion. Mm-hmm. came about of one man, one man in particular by the name of Samuel Adams that everybody, yo, oh, he was one of the founding fathers. He thought that the individuals in the Shays Rebellion, guys, you can look it up, Shays Rebellion, he thought that they should be hung. He thought, he thought that they should be hung. That's what he, that's what he thought. Uh, a lot of these guys, Washington, Washington, uh, Hamilton, they immediately, they immediately wanted a big federal government. Oh yeah, you yeah, know that's why, they, that's why they scrapped the Articles of Confederation. And it takes me back to it takes me back to what I talk about here on the show. You know, generational mind control. You've been under a king. You've been under a certain slight form of despotism for so many. You know, your father and, the, and your grandfather, maybe not his grandfather, but what were these men, men expected to do? You had some free thinkers. Yeah, th- guys, did anybody know that Jefferson wasn't involved in the Constitution? You know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Jefferson wasn't. Jeff- Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Um, I, you know, aside from that whole slave owning thing, I like Jefferson. I liked his ideas. Have you ever read? I posted it on social media the other day. You might have. Uh, you might have seen it. Patrick Henry. During the Constitution rat- uh, ratif- uh, ratifying convention in Virginia in 1788, it was in June or July. Do you know that he said he said this is not this is screwed up? I'm just giving you my version of what he said. This is screwed up. You've set it up where your president can be a king, and the Senate is going to have little or no power. And the power they do have, they'll probably sell it off for their own good. They'll probably he, he this guy was prophetic in what he was saying at that convention, and there were a lot of individuals that backed him. But, you know, as things go, everybody decides to say, okay, They uh, many of them decided to ratify it and vote for it. I think there was probably a certain kind of emotional fervor that was going on at this time. You know, like, yeah, we kicked their butt. We got them out of here. And the next thing you know, we end up in a certain form of despotism that was allowed to slight. Nobody saw it, but it slowly, slowly reared its evil head, and it used the basis of that constitution to elaborate mm-hmm. itself. Yeah, that, I mean that, the the anti federalists scream bloody murder about that too. They just they just fought a war for their independence they, from that from that uh, from that tyranny. And uh, I mean, yeah, they saw exactly that uh, Constitution was setting up that exact same tyranny that they just lost family members for. I'm looking here at an article. Where it says the safest place to escape the new world order. I'm not even going to look at the article. I just see it on one of the feeds here. I have on one of my pages on my website. <laughs> it's the safest place to escape the new world order. <laughs> I bring, I bring that up because I'm not going to talk about physically, mentally. The ideas that you bring about, a lot of the ideas I espouse here on the show, this is the safest place. As far as mentally, it's the safest place to escape it because – and you're not going to escape it. That's the thing, guys. You're not going to escape it. When you have such a despotism that's been in, around for millennia, it's kind of hard to get past it. you, you really got to squash it. Yeah. you, you got to squash it. I'm, I'm not a violent – I don't believe in violence, but <clears> – <throat> Uh, you just kind of look back and say, "Well, these guys do." The ones that the, the ones on the other side, they do believe in violence. The the two opposing groups now in the sheeple electoral process, the sheeple political process, they believe in violence against each other. I'm sure you've seen it over and over. You see a, oh, pers- yeah. a person on the right, they sit there and say, "Oh, these awful liberals," blah 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 la la la, and then the one on the other side, they'll say the same thing. Over and over and over again. So and then then there's Bernie Sanders. <laughs> oh yeah, Phil <laughs> openly avowed socialist. Uh, Phil- got to get that. Got to get that third party in there. Some even though he's running as a Democrat, you get a, like got to get the third party in there. Feel the burn. Come on, man. Feel the burn. <laughs> feel the burn. Don't you love that? All the stupid little sayings that start to, the the you know they just need a, they just need three words: hope and change. Feel the burn. Three syllables: Donald Trump. Something like that. It, it's amazing. People really in this country that are dumbed down are very, very much dumbed down, and they are raising children that will raise children that will raise children in the same template and paradigm. Yep, and it's, it's 
and I have a major issue with the Bernie. I don't, I don't, I can't send my voter registration, so I have no reason to care about politics. But I do kind of, I mean, it's, you can't really avoid it on Facebook, on fascist books. So I do kind of, I do kind of, I, I, I kind of see some of it. Um, but I, I mean, these, these Bernie Sanders fan, like these Bernie Sanders advocates, they don't even have to look like, they don't even have to look back at history. I mean, look at Venezuela, look at, uh, look at Greece. Like they don't even, they don't even have to like pick up a history book. They just have to turn on, they just have to go to a website that'll show them what's going on in Greece and Venezuela and they'll be like, wow, this thing's bad. We should. Right. It's the falling apart. For this. It's the falling apart process. Um, and then you can even go back farther. You can go back to the Bolshevik Revolution, which a lot of individuals that engaged in that, a lot of individuals that engaged in that, had no idea what was going to be on the other side. A lot of them had the same sort of beliefs. Say that you might find a lot of uh, right wing people do this these days. But next thing you know, they're they're stuck. They're stuck in that system. Yeah, it doesn't work. <clears throat> Excuse me. It never works. You can look through history and see where uh, communism and socialism are practiced. There's the initial stage. I was talking to a friend of mine. I said, there's the initial stage of trinkets. There, there's the trinket stage, the trinket and fun stage, utopia. But then – and it's not for everyone now. But then things start to run out, so those with – more trinkets have to start putting in their trinkets so others can get trinkets. Next thing you know, the trinkets run out and your natural resources run out. See, uh, Germany. And then, and then everything is, everything is uh, centralized under the government and then there's no wealth that can possibly be produced. So then you have to ask for a bailout from, right. <laughs> a bailout See, from the European Central Bank and. <laughs> I always wonder why this is a this is something I always wonder. I wonder why a lot of the socialists don't reference Nazi Germany. Because I mean Nazi Germany didn't go through the whole whole course. But these guys were dra- you know big time using their own resources and they made socialism work for a while. Think about it. World War 2, they weren't getting they didn't uh they weren't getting gas and stuff from uh, oh I thought I, I thought I knocked us off there for a second, man. <laughs> they they weren't getting uh, <clears throat> they weren't getting gas and stuff from say Indonesia and um, and and the areas where say Japan was getting their fuel from. They were mining coal, man. They were mining coal and turning it into fuel. These these guys were actually they were making their goods in the country work. Now that would have eventually failed. That would you eventually run out. Then you get into the whole scientific socialism, communism thing. It's checks and balances, and you might be one of those checks and balances. They'll bring about, and this is where I I see the emotional fervor come in, which the communist and socialist is truly engaged in. The mm-hmm. emotional fervor come in. They start pointing fingers. Oh, those awful Wall Street people. Oh, those awful you know these bankers, and it's not like they're good people. But they, they get, they detract, you know, they, it's like, don't look over here, look over there at that guy. Don't look over here at us that got the system going, look over here at that guy. Oh that's, yeah, and I that's mean, just simply taking advantage of the system and doing, and, and doing what people that get involved in the system do. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I do see that a lot too. You'll, you'll see the people point out uh, capitalism, which is the, the corporatocracy. You'll see people point out uh, um, the police state. And you'll see people point out all of these all of these various grievances, and uh, you'll have all of these groups spring up trying to fight that one issue. But all they're doing is they're they're cutting the branch. They're not striking the root, and uh, um, that's a major. Uh, <laughs> ma- if, if if you cut off if you cut off one branch, one else one another one's going to grow in its place. Um, but if you strike the root and get rid of the the, the, the major problem. Um, then, uh, yeah, it solves the problem a lot better, but unfortunately we haven't been able to do that throughout history. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I saw a socialist on social media the other day and, well, a vowed socialist. Uh, they never practiced it, you know, but they, it's, it's, it's a big dream. I, I saw them and what they were, they were talking about, um, Wall Street paying for people's college. Wall Street paying for people's college. Now, in this long diatribe, they were also talking about we need another bailout, but we don't need to give it to Wall Street. Uh, it's like, wait, you're confusing yourself here. You're talking about Wall Street. Socializing of losses much? Right, right. You're talking about, okay, we're going, we need to, we need to take the money from them and make them do this, but we need another bailout, but let's not give it to them. And they don't understand that a lot of this excess and stuff that came to these guys, where did it come from? It came from these big bailouts. It came, it comes from government money. It comes from your money. So why don't you just send your kid to high, won't you just send your kid to college? How about that? There we go. Why don't you just send your child to college and shut up? 
And then we get into the whole idea, why would you want to do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they teach? What do they teach in those schools these days? Good, good question. Uh, <laughs> good question. I, I'm ta- I decided to take uh, sociology this semester, and I really didn't know what I was getting into. I really didn't. Um, but obviously you have the, uh, I guess, the uh, cultural Marxism, the, the uh, leftist social justice warrior stuff. She, that was kind of a... Uh, um, brought up in our class. And then uh, we were talking about the uh, Age of Enlightenment. It was like 1700s, 1800s. And uh, she pulled up the PowerPoint. Karl Marx's face was on the front, on the on the introduction slide. And I was like, oh, God. Prepare yourself, Shane. Prepare yourself. And, uh, yeah, um, she, uh, she went on to openly praise communism. And her example was, uh, well, and the, 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 the worst part is she had to say, so class, Karl Marx was a communist. And I was like, you really have to Okay, yeah, you probably do have to tell them that, but anyways, but she's like, so for those of you who don't know what communism is, if I have a pie, I would cut it into 20 equal slices and we would all get a piece. Doesn't that sound great? And I was sitting there, this is like the third class of the semester, and I really, like, I need to get a good grade in that class so I can move on to the higher, higher level of indoctrination um, to get that magic piece of paper. <laughs> but, you, you can go to the next degree of being hoodwinked, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, but uh, I wanted to bring up. It seems some, it seems like something that a lot of the communists kind of uh, li- like to not mention is the uh, 260 million uh, people citizens killed by their government in the 20th century, um, and uh, most of that was done under communist regimes. So it's it's a it's and some people probably wouldn't take it that seriously. But when you look at all of the all of the damage and the um, poverty and, and the terrible lives that have been destroyed by communism. It's not a light subject to talk about, and she's kind of just bringing it up like nonchalantly, like telling telling the class she likes communism. And it's I don't know, it was it was it was it was bad. I actually wrote an article on that because it was so terrible. Yeah, the there's a good it's it's a speech it's a speech. Uh, you you have a link to my library and uh, stuff. I think there, there's a speech out there. It's called how and this really brings me to how they're using the black community now. Socialist and communist are using the black community. The it's called how a it's a speech given by a black communist at the Chicago Young Socialist Convention in 1963 called "How a Minority Can Change the World." I invite you to read that, man. Very, very uh, eye-opening and fascinating. And I back to something you were talking about the age of enlightenment. Isn't it interesting? What is enlightenment? That is illumination. I hear so many. I hear right-wing uh, radio host. They'll talk about the Age of Enlightenment. The Age of Enlightenment, the 1700s, it brought so much. What was Enlightenment? Enlightenment was what the, for lack of a better word, these Illuminates, not just Wysop. Wysop was just an idea guy. A lot of people have to realize that. They turn him into this like he was the end-all, be-all, but Wysop was an idea guy. There were those around him and those that those around him influenced that became the worker bees that actually put it into place. And... This enlightenment they're talking about is squashing people's morality, uh, squashing people people's well. And listen, the uh, the Catholic Church set itself up for a bad fall anyway, the way they did things. But it was really against what people believed, their common values, so forth and so on. They said, well, you know, well, let's change this. This is all, you know, this is all old and outdated. You know, morals and guys, morals aren't something that, and you'll agree with this. You're an atheist. Morals are not something that are exclusive to religion. Oh no! By no means. We all know that. We know when we do something wrong. If I came, if I took a road trip up to Illinois and you were at school and I, I came in and took all your uh, studio stuff and your computers and stuff, <laughs> I mean, come on, this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's, it, that's wrong unless you're unless you're an anarcho-communist and then you don't believe in property. So, <laughs> right, but I would know it's wrong. I, I know. Even, even if I did it, I'm, you know, and what do people and this? Then it gets into the whole mind control idea, how people justify things, so forth and so on. You know, what, man, I think we're coming up against a break here in just a second, guys. Make sure and hang in. We uh, have Mr. Shane Radliff back here after we get back from the break. Plus, a co-host, Mr. John LeBang, will be joining us. Hashtag banger. We'll be right back, guys. Here on Waking Up the Masses, here on TruthFrequencyRadio.com.
Welcome back to Waking Up the Masses. I'm your host, Robert Bruce. Joined by joined by now, joined by my co-host, Mr. John LeBang, and our guest today, Mr. Shane Radliff. How are you doing, Mr. LeBang? I'm doing excellent. How are you gentlemen doing? Doing good, John. Nice to speak with you again. Good to speak with you, man. Did you notice did you notice that I accidentally did a little three syllable LeBang? There was two B's in there. I don't know how that happened. It happens. You got excited, man. I think I had a mind glitch or something. I don't know what it is. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. We have Mr. Shane Radliff here from libertyunderattack.com. Go to his website. Check his stuff out, libertyunderattack.com. So, and also, remember, guys, phone's open if you want to ask Mr. Mr. Radliff anything or if you want to call in and give Mr. LeBang a hard time. The number is... Eight, six, yeah, out. there you go. Hashtag banger. He'll bang it up. 866-37-TRUTH or 866-378-7884. Welcome back. So, <clears throat> Shane. Yes, sir. I just want to make sure you're still there. No. Um, so... Let me ask you this. This is one thing that I've had a lot of people over the years when I've been doing this. I talk about things, and they always throw out this, which this should be thrown out. This is the whole. This is the whole cusp of everything. What are our solutions? What are our solutions for getting out of this despotism? What are our solutions where we can be not just free in our minds and our actions, but the whole gamut of things? Where it's not like where it's not like we're having to, you know, I'm free and I believe in freedom and everything. Bam, hit my head against the wall. You know what? What is the, what are the solutions in all of this? Well, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, when I started the show, I really didn't have any. I, I really didn't know what the solution what the solutions were. Um, but since I've, I've become a volunteerist and I began looking at the economic means rather than the political means, um, my co-host uh, and one of our colleagues uh, they put together a really great uh, article. Um, called the uh, Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action. And that's not to be confused with the uh, direct action that you see like during protests with the black block technique. That's uh, not what we're talking about here. Um, but uh, um, I guess to a lot of these things are to become more individually free. Um, but there's one that I wanted to bring up, and it's called Agorism. Um, it was started by a man named Samuel Edward Conkin III. Um, he was the one that started that. Um, he wrote a couple books on it, uh, New Libertarian Manifesto uh, and uh, Primer on Ag- uh, the Agorist Primer. And uh, Agorism is operating in the uh, or doing business in the black and gray markets, um, things that have been uh, deemed illegal by the state but aren't immoral. So obviously you couldn't go kill, murder, rape, or anything like that. That would st- still be immoral. But it would be things like uh, operating an unlicensed business, um, not paying taxes, not having a driver's license, um, Ways to kind of free yourself from the state. The, the goal of agorism is to set up alternative institutions uh, to the state. Um, that would be things like uh, private arbitration, uh, dispute resolution organizations, um, private security. Um, the closest thing to that now, I don't think they're, um, I think there's, they're still uh, um, within the two party system, but there's the uh, threat management center in Detroit. And uh, since the Detroit police ca- or takes an hour for them to respond to anything, they've kind of filled the, filled the void where the government has. Uh, has dropped out. Um, so I think a good is, day. You know, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, agorism is, is, is a great tool that can be used. Um, it's definitely a great tool uh, for those that are interested. Uh, me and Kyle Reardon did a, uh, a an audio book on his uh, Agorist Primer that's available on the LUA YouTube channel. So if you're on a, going on a long car trip or something, turn that bad boy on and, uh, and take a listen. Um, other things, um, homeschooling. Um, getting your kids out of uh, the government schools, uh, that's extremely important if you want to have critically thinking, intelligent young children. Um, let's see, homesteading, um, another way to get out of the system to some extent. Um, let's see, um, I'm a big advocate of uh, of uh, security culture and uh, things like encryption. Um, encryption, I, I think, is extremely important. Um, obviously, it it's uh, they call it the cyber wars. Um, obviously, the NSA still finds ways into some of it, but at least you're making it a little harder on them. Um, and plus, if you do ever need encrypted communications, at least you already have uh, everything set up and ready to go. Um, one thing I'm working on right now is unbanking. Um, there's definitely a privacy loss when you're uh, within the uh, within the big banks, well, big and small banks. They like to report a lot of your information uh, to the governments. And uh, plus, when you uh, become unbanked, um, there's uh, another thing: cryptocurrencies. Um, it's gold, silver, bartering, things like that. Um, like I said, a lot of, a lot of these things, but this is something I've been kind of focusing on. 
it's one thing I've noticed with a lot of the alternative media um, and uh, like with all of these protests and things like that, the first step, the first thing that needs to happen is we need to come, become free within our own mind before we try to free others. And this entire list, uh, it's called the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action. This entire list will um, help you become more free, um, either mentally or, or physically or both. Um, so there are a lot of options, and this is just uh, the first release. Uh, the second one's already being worked on. So there are a lot of things that people can do within the economic means. Um, that uh, some of them, um, this this list isn't tested for viability, um, but there are a lot of them that uh, have been tried and tr- have been tried and true. So um, yeah, the economic means. So economic, do you, you think this is one one way to do this? Now, what? And this, I just look at. And the reason I bring this up, the reason I ask this question is because history shows in this country and other countries, when people want to do these kind of things, there's always a big, a big dung covered jag boot ready just to smash your head. Always. See, this is, I am not, like I said, I don't, I'm not for violence. I don't like violence, man. I don't like, I don't, I, I pretty much don't, I, I, I used to, I've, I've used to box sometimes. I even then after 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 doing that, I, if I <clears throat> if I pounded somebody's head good, I felt bad. I, I really did. I felt bad. I don't I don't particularly care for violence. So, but the other side does. the the other The other side. Well, let's just say the other side. The sides that try to stick us to the middle and then pull us back and forth, such as you know religion with its idea of uh, it always has God on its side. Hey, remember, I can, I can give, I, I don't have to give you a marriage license because I got God on my side. And then the other side that under the veil of actually controlling you later, they give you the side that they'll make every man God. And this idea of liberté, fraternité, equality, uh, egalité, excuse me, given the whole French, <clears throat> with their, you know, this whole uh, group mind thought being a sheep. It's just group mind thought. I can be this whole collective God, group mind thought being a sheep. Now, with this process, both of these groups, history shows, are very willing to uh, kick our butt. Both of these groups have no problem. You know, you go across, unlike the unlike the average everyday person who says, I'm going to draw a line in the sand. And when they cross it, they say, well, I'm going to draw this line in the sand. They draw a line in the sand, and when you cross it, you pay the price. Yeah. So so what's the solution to that? See, that's, that's really where I'm <clears> – I – do you think that we are heading towards – because, you know, Jefferson, if you read some of Jefferson's writings, he did not like the idea of the violence that was going to happen in war. He, he knew people were going to die. He knew on both sides. He knew they were going to suffer. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we got to – well, I still believe that was a scripted war as well. But to the everyday person, they finally – and it wasn't it wasn't everybody. It was only it was only about 3 to 5 percent, if even, if, not, if even that much. They said, "Okay, I have to do this. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. I don't want to, but instead of their jackboot being on my head, I'm gonna have to stick mine up their backside." Yeah, yeah, and I definitely know what you mean, and that's one of the major issues with statism. Um, like, even for someone just not paying their taxes, like you can be looked down on. Like, if you resist being being uh, being uh, stolen from, um, yeah, some people get really, really mad about that. Um, so, yeah, there's there's definitely that issue. Um, and uh, obviously, with uh, um, agorism, is the art of being uh, art of being stealthy. Um, you don't want to get. You obviously try not to get caught. It involves a lot of risk analysis. Um, but yeah, that's de- that's definitely. Um, I, I think violence is, is is inevitable. Unfortunately, I I, I don't want it. I'm hoping. Um, I, I hope for the best, and uh, hopefully, the counter economy with agorism can can. Be, be, can work the way that Conkin envisioned it. He had a his thing was starve the state um, with the counter economy and then smash it when it's weak. Um, I don't know how close we are to that. Obviously, you don't know about these agorist groups because they have to stay to stay private. Um, but I know one of our guests, Derek Bros, has uh, um, he does a lot of uh, agorism and trying to get people out of the system, um, and that'd be like the uh, um, the corporate jobs and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure if there's a way to avoid the violence. These are just these are just methods to um, help make you more individually free, and then also like with agorism, um, you can help free others at that point too. Um, 
The best outcome is that, uh, like I said, starve the, sma- starve the state and then smash it. Um, the worst outcome, which would probably happen anyways, you know, even if people weren't, uh, um, even people weren't trying to, trying some of these solutions, um, it's, 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 it's gonna get bad, especially if they build that wall down at the southern border. <laughs> but it's easier with the Federal Reserve note for everybody. They can just trade this little note and get everything. The average person is not going to buy into a system like that, which they're just not, because it's too hard of a system. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely not. Uh, it's, it's definitely not easy, and it does take some 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 edu- some education and reading. Um, so yeah, you're you're definitely right about that. Um, but a lot of these things, I mean, um, freedom takes work, and uh, um, I. I I think you're exactly right, John. I think most people won't be willing to do the work. Um, but but that's I mean, that why so. I was going to say that's why socialism is so appealing to a lot of people because it's less work. They think, anyways. Money for nothing and chicks for free, John. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great tune, Shane. You probably never heard that one, have you? Uh, I, I might. I might have. I might have. I'm not sure. Doesn't. The, doesn't. I, I felt I was talking. To, I was conversating with him on social on uh, Skype today, man, and I. I felt old, John. I asked him if he ever watched any of the old Star Treks because I was going to show him my trouble with Truther's picture. <laughs> and he said, no. I was like, ah, oh. my, 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 my shoulders hunched and my back hurt for a second. But- never, <laughs> never, never seen an episode of Star Trek. You should don't, really kick, don't kick me off the show. But no, you should watch it because that gives you a lot of uh, uh, mystery school stuff in there. It's really incredible if you pay oh, yeah. attention. Oh, and how they promote socialism. Mm-hmm. How, how they promote socialism, and it's going to be this wonderful thing. We have no money. We have no need for things anymore. We grew out of that. It's like uh, you always have a need for things. You're always going to have – now, or a want, a want for excess, You know that might be a little bit different if you take it to an unhealthy point. But you're always going to have a need for things, and you're always going to need something to barter to get those things. This is this is why we do. This is why we are not blobs that sit in one place and don't do anything and just soak up and soak up some kind of unknown energy. Because that's really, if you want to, if you want to look at it, that's what the socialists and the communists believe. <laughs> they can just do they can just do some work and uh, and otherwise they just soak it all up. Uh, <clears throat> Shane, I was I don't know if you ever uh, have done this. Do you know where you know the earned income credit that that our financial socialist. Uh, puppet up there named uh, George George Bush, you know, the uh, little boy Bush. The earned income credit, it's very interesting to look that, you know what the socialist calls the business owner? His money he makes, you know what they call it? What? Unearned income. Hmm. Unearned income. I was looking at that the other day, and I was like, and that's in that, that's in that uh, speech that I told you about how a minority can change the world. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Unearned income. I was like, oh my gosh. Hmm. Here it is. Here, look, unearned income. So if it's earned income, what is that? You get some extra money, man. Here, have it. Have it. And who's paying that? Who is paying that? Yeah, I watched my grandfather. My grandfather was a college professor. And I watched him. He was an English lit professor. And I watched him bust his butt. I watched him bust his butt for years. And I watched the taxes he had to pay. I knew about these things because I would hear him. I would hear him, and I would hear my grandmother, <clears throat> my grandmother, fussing about it that they had to pay this this many taxes. Okay, um, so in this process, the, in this process, look. Okay, we're going to tax the rich and give to the poor. Tax the rich and give to the so-called poor. Now, is it really poor? Are you really poor? I mean, you have a you have a single mother. She works or. And sometimes they're not even single. They just decided not to get married or even a family. Uh, father doesn't make that much. The mother sits at home and only works maybe a couple months a year so that she can add her name to that whole uh, tax return. And they get like three kids, eight, eight grand. You know, almost eight grand, eight eight thousand dollars in between five and eight thousand dollars. Man, see, this is insane. Yeah, but we do it for the corporations too. Indeed, it's the same thing. They get more. Yeah, it's all social. It's all, it's all socialization of losses, which is kind of funny. Um, you look at uh, um, it's kind of a weird system about uh, that's set up here. You've got like the uh, socialist leaning, um, the Democrats and the progressives, and you have like the fascist leaning GOP. But then you have uh, um, a lot of the 
um, more mainline GOP and uh, conservative folks um, that are for the bailouts, which is socializing the losses. So there's this weird overlap um, that's kind of uh, ingrained within the system, so I'm not really even sure. Um, you could call it pretty much anything, and it'd be accurate. <laughs> oh, they all want they all want the government to be their daddy. Right. It's just different levels of socialism. That's all it is. Even the fascists have their own version of socialism. Oh yeah, definitely do. That's, there's certainly there's certainly overlap. There's certainly overlap. So what's the constant here? The constant here is someone at the top that's making decisions. Yeah. Someone at the top is making decisions. Uh, I got death storm coming in, so if I'm gone, I'm sorry. You got a what? Death storm is coming in. Dust so, storm? Death. Store. Oh, I thought you said dust storm. I thought I, I, I thought you lived in Detroit. What's going on yeah. up there? <laughs> What's going on in Detroit? Did I missed something. When I was up there. Oh my! Oh my! So, guys, make sure go to. Uh, uh, in case you've just tuned in, we have Mr. Shane Radliff of LibertyUnderAttack dot com. Make sure and frequent his website. Go check out his stuff. So I was uh, looking over some stuff and listening to an interview. I'll let you talk about this guy, the Muslim agorist. Uh, yep, <clears throat> yep. This one uh, um, attracted some uh, some people that weren't very happy, as you can imagine. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was definitely interesting. I heard about Davi Barker um, about a month ago, and uh, um, I, I've listened. He's a co-host on one of the one of the radio shows I listen to, so I've heard him quite a bit. And he does a lot of entrepreneurial things. Um, he's an author. He has a, a couple of business, couple of Bitcoin businesses going. Um, He's, he's definitely doing quite a bit, and, and, and then, as you can see, he, he named himself the Muslim Agorist. Um, it was an, an interesting, uh, interesting interview, because, um, I, I mean, I, and we all, we all well know that uh, um, there's a lot of neocon, neocon propaganda and rhetoric surrounding the whole radical Islam thing. Right. Did you ask him if he had sex with goats and stuff? No, I, I, I didn't. <laughs> no, I, 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 I love that one. I love that one. You will hear people. And, I'm, okay, come on, guys. You know. Backwoods places, you're always going to find weird people that have sex with animals. It's kind of weird. I don't understand it, but it happens. Um, but at this, you know, <laughs> what possesses a man to say, I'm going to have sex with an animal? But at the same time, that, you know, at the same time, if you look into, now, I, I, I don't believe in what the Quran says. I'm not a Muslim. But there are tenets in there. They are very, very clean. They would not have sex with an animal. They would not have sex with an animal. Now, historically, you look at Mohammed, you know, getting into some young stuff there, not too good. But that was simply, that was also going on in Judaism. It was, uh, they had sort of a, <laughs> it was barter. It, it was barter. You would sell your, you know, you have, you have several daughters or a few sons and a few daughters. You need to, you need to be, you've got some issues. You can't feed your family. You would trade off one of your daughters to wow. another, another group. Uh, this happened, man. This happened. It's not like we have – see, this is one thing I think we do have as far as an enlightened society where we see that there is a certain time. And even then, you know, someone may be 18, an adult. I'm a 40 – and this really bothers me. When I see men my age going after women that are 18, 19, 20, I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's really creepy. Yeah, if you're – if you are old enough where I could have fathered you – and I was a wild guy back in the day. You know, tell him what happened. If you're old enough where I could have fathered you, I'm not dating you. It's not going to happen. But I, do, I think that we do have, we have evolved, so to say, where we do understand, you know, you don't go trading off your daughters and stuff like that. But in some backwoods places, India and in rural areas, Middle East and rural areas, it, this happens. Or even, it, I mean, in the, in the South, some of the, the, the weird kind of incestual stuff. I mean, it, it, it happens. Hey, you watch it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, hey, was refer wasn't referring to you, Robert. <laughs> no, no, you you are right. There is a it's. I live in what's called Chickamauga, and maybe five miles south of me, there's an area called Flintstone, and then right down this road from that, a couple of miles, is an area called Kensington. Now, in Kensington, you will find there is a family there, and they don't leave the farm, man. They don't leave the farm, except every once in a while, there's one, he'll hang out at this little store in Flintstone. Meet the Flintstone. But he, he'll hang out at this little store in Flintstone, Georgia. And sometimes a brother will be with him. And yeah, the DNA, you keep missing, mixing that DNA and never letting it get off the farm. Things happen. Things happen. And that's, I think that's nature's way of keeping them out of the loop. 
unless you are unless you have uh, some kind of royal blood and you sit on the crown on, on a throne somewhere, then you can have sex with your cousins all day because you don't want to let it get off the farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The insanity is one side gets worshipped by the masses and the other side gets ridiculed by the masses, but really they're all perverted and they have sex with their cousins. The, this is what gets me. I always talk about the what one author called the dual uh, the dual mind breach. I call the cross threaded mind screw. Is people will they will judge one side, but they won't judge the other. They'll look at one side and say, oh, "Okay, oh yeah, Diana's so beautiful." Blah blah blah. Yes, yeah, she was Charles' cousin. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Everyday intelligent people. We went out. We decided to have sex with our cousin. We're going to get ridiculed. You can do that if you're royalty. Um, you know, I just I always like to bring that up, the little double standard there. Um, so really, in reality, these guys like the Queen of England, so forth and so on, they're nothing more than inbred hicks. Yeah, yeah it does happen, but the thing is, it happens everywhere. I've been out in rural California. You're going to find it there, too. Anywhere that people get way out, they get on it, and uh, they decide to forego being educated and these, and these things – you will find a little bit of weirdness that goes. Not always. No, not always by any means. Not always. But you're always going to find freaks out there that have sex with their cousins and sisters and animals. Yeah, that's true. It's na- But nature has its way. That's what I was going to say. Nature has its way to make sure these things don't, don't on, on a normal scale, make sure these things don't succeed because you end up with, uh, you end up with uh, some strange looking and uh, non thinking creatures. Nature's it's losing. What's that? Nature's losing. Oh yeah, nature is losing. People aren't even uh, even doing it like I'm, we're talking about. It's just losing because, of, isn't that crazy? It's not really crazy, but John, don't you think nature's been losing for a long time? Oh yeah. Yep. You know, man, <clears throat> man has been able to be controlled, all these things, and he's not able to express his true, oh, what you come out of the womb with. You know, besides not being able to walk and everything, uh, but you do come out of the womb being completely free. If you think yeah. about it, sort of in a figurative way, you come out of the womb being completely free. It's all the propaganda that's put up on your put up on you over time. Where I mean, think about it. You watch a little kid do something. I, you know, I, 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 remember, I know about this. <clears throat> I'm a father. Watch a watch a child fall down. Now I watch other parents when when uh, theirs fell down. Like, oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? You've already put into that child's mind. You can get hurt, cry. Now, the ones that don't do this, what happens? The ones that don't do this, what happens? They are, uh, uh, the kid gets up, brushes himself off, unless he really, really hurts himself, gets up, brushes himself off, and goes on. Then it really goes on into adult life. A lot of parents will, a lot of parents will, as their children become adults, they'll still hover over them. And so every little bad thing that happens, the child becomes over-emotional about it. The child becomes over-emotional, and it becomes something that they feel like holds them down. See, we are – and that's just a little facet of it. We are slowly, over time, by our parents because they were slowly over time by their parents, and they were slowly over time by their parents convinced that this is the way it should be. It's always been like this, same as it ever was. It's always been like this, and it's always going to be like this, and nothing's ever going to change. That nothing. Nobody really ever says nothing's ever going to change. We get that little idea put in our head that, oh, you can change the world if you stay in the system, <laughs> which yeah. is what I like about you, man. You've realized at a young age to get the heck out of the system. You yeah, that's why I'm – I didn't know that when I was your age. I was concerned with what I talk about here on the show, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> I'm just lucky. I'm just lucky that I was that I actually did get married at like 22, 23, or I would have would have been too much sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> but no, it, it's uh, it, it really is amazing how we are convinced. Our say you get married and you have children, and I'm sure you're not going to ask for. Are you going to ask for a license when you get married? Oh no, that's no. But that's what, what if you meet a girl that didn't insist on having a document? Uh, it's one of my. I'm not going to ask permission. Like she's got. She's got to be on board with that. That's. Just, uh, it's going to be. And I, I've kind of. I posted this before on Facebook. It's like yeah, I kind of put my like my, my parameters. Not going to. I'm not going to buy you a diamond. I'll get you some. I'll get you something nice like gold or something like that. But I'm not buying you a diamond, and we aren't getting a marriage license. So uh, yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be hard. But uh, I mean, I'm not in a in a major rush. 
Definitely not a major rush. Oh, just let it happen. That's what you don't 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 hold don't. back. Don't push it. Yeah, yeah, just wait wait till you're at least in your mid thirties. Have you know, do your thing, man. Wait till you're fifty. Okay, that's even better. Yeah, wait till you're fifty. <laughs> but by then you don't want to have you know, by then you're not gonna want to have little kids running around. True, true. But see that's a, I think that's one thing that does keep people and this is just a little subconscious thing. I think it's one thing that does keep people, um, makes them hold back from getting married and having, you know, the families and stuff these days because there is, they know there is a document that they have to go get and produce another document to get out of. Yeah. And it's a, it's a lot harder to get out. Trust me. <laughs> I, love, I love the bureaucracies. But yeah, it, I keep going back to that woman up in Kentucky. Do you know she's been married four times? Really? Yeah. We'll talk. Hey, we'll get into this a little bit when we get back. Hey, in there, guys. You're listening to Waking Up the Masses. We shall return with our guest, Mr. Shane Radley. Hey, in there. Welcome back to Waking Up the Masses. Mr. LeBang and I are joined today by our friend and guest, Mr. Shane Radliff. Welcome back, sir. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You know, John LeBang's running for president. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I've seen on a uh, fascist book. <laughs> Thank, now, now, you can vote for him. Just go write it in somewhere. Well, I actually, I, actually, What's that? I actually can't vote. I, I can't vote my voter registration. So even if I wanted That's, to, I couldn't. You became a free person. Now I was talking about, see, this is one thing that really gets me. Uh, this lady in Kentucky, yeah, and this is, I'm going to tell you, a lot, and this might, if people are listening from the South and they fall in this category, it's going to make them mad, but that's what, I tend to make a lot of people mad. I could read an email I got yesterday, but I won't. Uh, I'm a misogynist, a racist, racist from what the email said, but. Oh, my God. <clears throat> yes. There's more misandry than misogyny in this country than there, it's just insane, but, um, this woman's been married four times. The third husband, she got pregnant with twins by the fourth husband while she was still married to the third husband. <laughs> I don't hate, and I don't knock anybody. I've been married twice, man. I'm not going to knock it, okay? No, no problem. No pro- you know, you can get married as many times as you want and so forth and so on. It's all, you know, do what you want to do. But this is the typical, you know, I see so much of this. It's like really, uh, you know, it, some of these, some of these, not all. Not all and not the majority, but some of these women I see in the South, it's like they can they can be uh, worse than Samaritans, okay? But come about in their 40s and 50s, suddenly they find Jesus and all that stuff. is It's okay. It's okay that I had sex with the whole football team because I found Jesus now. And now, and see, that's fine. If, you want, if that's what you believe, you can do that. I believe people should forgive themselves or in whatever way they or seek forgiveness or whatever if they feel they need it. That, that's fine. But the thing is, it's like it cancels it out now, and now they can point the finger at you. They can say, you know what? I don't agree with this because, and, and you know, and then we'll get into the absurdity next. I don't agree with this because I have these morals, and I don't think you should be able to play in the same game that I do, even though my game used to be a whole mo- lot more ramped up than your game ever was. I don't believe <laughs> you can play in this game, but really the absurdity in all this of one group, the whole theocracy on one side saying, uh, oh, it's terrible. You shouldn't be able to do this. It goes against what we believe in. And then the other side saying, give us a license. Give us permission. Oh, please, King, give us permission so we can be married. And this goes, hey, this goes for straight people and, and, and gay people. What, what's wrong with you? Quit bowing down, quit bowing down to kings. Quit bowing down to people. You, you quit, you know, hey, you want to get married? You're gay? Go get married. Go get married. Go get married by somebody to marry you. You want to be straight? Go get, get married. Go back and get married by someone to marry you, but quit asking for permission. The whole idea of a driver's license, but look at the enforcement. See, that's the thing. We get into 
uh, you know, I, I guess it almost becomes like a, um, it becomes La La Land. It becomes sort of a fiction because anytime there's an opposition that I'm talking about, one, you're ridiculed and you're told that, oh, it don't work like that. Uh, people that will scream freedom, freedom, freedom all day, suddenly they'll tell you it doesn't work like that. You have to, you have to be part of the state. Robert, it's fine to stand up for your principles. However, this lady is doing it at, at her job, which the rules state at her job that she has to follow these rules. If she really wanted to stand on her principles, she would quit the job. That's, that's, yeah, that's the exactly what I said too. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. If, if I said if if I had a business and at this business I said everyone is required to strap a I got these hats and they have like these little you know you know the beer drinking hats you know you'll see people put a can. Do they still have those? Am I that, that, that outdated? They're, they're still around. Okay, you know, they have the cans. I say, well, you have to wear one of those hats with a sex toy on each side. That, that's my business. Do you? There you go. Don't work for me. Don't work for me then. I would never have a business like that. But And if I ever went to a business like that, I think it would scare the heck out of me. But don't work for me. Don't do it. She, you're, exactly, you're exactly right, John. She signed on to say, okay. <laughs> and, and she's no different than a little socialist. You know, that's what she is in her own right. Even though she's a right, you know, they would call her a right winger. She's all about power over people. Indeed. Yeah, and, that's, and, and because she has some sort of, quote unquote, moral superiority, even though, you know, I just gave you a little bit, just a tad of her history there. And like I said, I don't knock anybody doing what they do. I'd hate for somebody to suddenly say, well, man, what about you when you were young? I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. Don't tell all that. Oh, I'd have to just go hide under a rock. No, seriously. The, the, it, it gets to be an insanity, and we, it has to stop. It truly has to stop, and people have to start in, truly embracing the freedom. If we don't start embracing freedom, we're just going to end up in the whole, uh, the whole big state thing, marching in line. Uh, People – and I love the way right-wing, they'll compare the Democrats to Nazis, and then the left-wing, they'll, they'll compare Republicans to Nazis. It's like, guys, both of you are Nazis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, 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 put little, you put little agitator groups on the street in order to get permission. You put little agitator groups on the street, whether it be the whole, uh, whole immigration thing, whether it be gay marriage. You put agitators on the street in order to get permission. What, what, what about – is there freedom in that? I mean, to the logical mind, you know, people can argue it all they want to with their emotions. To the logical mind, is there any freedom in that? No, there's not. No, and that's that's one thing that really drew me to libertarianism. And when I say libertarianism, I'm talking small L, not the libertarian party, but with uh, with the with the with the twin axioms. Um, with libertarianism, it's it's you may or you may not with any one of these authoritarian stripes or flavors, whether it be um, the neocons, whether it be the progressives, GOP, whoever it may be. It's you can or you cannot. Well, freedom. I, I think you know, and you you know, liber liberty, liberty and freedom. Freedom is uh, how a good example. Freedom is me holding my you and I standing in front of each other, and we're holding our arms straight out. Liberty is when I move close enough that suddenly my hands are in your area. They're, they're crossing where your arms are are standing out. You have to give me liberty to do that. That's where liberty starts to take place because I will give you liberty. Okay, come on in, man. Let's talk. Let's shake hands, so forth and so on. Freedom has to do with your own self, uh, your body. This is why you will hear me. What do I believe about abortion? I believe it's murder. I believe abortion is murder. I believe the stuff they do today is terrible. But you know what? That's somebody else's body. Yeah. You, you were talking about the ownership of your body, the ownership of your body. And, um, and a lot of people wouldn't like my thoughts on that. I also have this belief that d DNA's ownership. So the father owns something there too. Oh, we can't talk. Fathers don't get any rights, do they? <laughs> nope, nope, and that's just uh, contract enforcement when it comes to uh, that sort of thing. Or at least with divorce. Um, Fathers don't get any rights because the government wants to be big daddy. Yep. That, that's why they. That's why you have such a messed up uh, child support system. It cares all. It cares big time all about making sure that the money changes hands. But what about the father and his engagement with the child? There's nothing in there that says, but, but you have to make sure the father's in this child's life because that's what makes a healthy child. No, that, that's what makes the that, state doesn't want a healthy child. Oh gosh, no! They want good slaves that keep asking for permission. They keep getting licenses, uh, licenses that keep playing the same game, same as it ever was, over and over again. 
Yeah, but they tried with that family reunification act thing they did. I don't know what was it back in the Bush era, I believe. And that's from what I, from personal experience, it had, that hasn't helped either because most of these fathers are, are scumbags. So it, I mean, you would be surprised out there how many fathers are actually railroaded. How many fathers are actually railroaded because the government says, okay, you can do this. I mean, think about, think about the logic. I like to look at logic and reason. If, as a man, as a man, if I can't provide for my child, say if there's, if you're split up, okay, with the, with the mother, if I can't provide for my child and I can't do this, I go to jail. All right. As a woman, big, big socialist daddy comes in. And helps you. They don't. And see, this is the problem with the government. A lot of people think this is old, old timey. But you know what they used to do? The the community, they would take care of the mother, and they would find a man that did not mind raising someone else's child to marry her. You know, they let them court. You know, let them go out on dates and stuff. And finally, they, you know, people understood there was there was a there was a something that went back past themselves, shall we say? Something that said, you know what? I have to make this other human being be complete. Yeah. That's true compassion. That's that compassion that isn't influenced by TV or media. That's that that compassion that comes from the heart for our own species. For our own species. And this is lost, man. See, this is the problem with the government. They're getting involved. These things are lost. And that's one thing I believe that you talk about anarcho-libertarianism and stuff. That's one thing I think it embraces. and, And you would see the family come back. A lot of people think that, you know, and isn't it funny how the the Christian right co-ops the family ideas? Uh, we're all about the family. It's also interesting if you go look at fascist countries, they they also embrace the idea of family. Or while making sure they control the family and all the ideas that the family goes through, they also embrace the, the and family. Then they'll, uh, then they'll send their child to school for, to government schools for eight hours a day, and then whenever they, in the summer, they'll send them to daycare all day while they're working and family aspect isn't isn't really there at all when you think yeah, about and, it. And, and, the then, and then what do the children do now when they get home? They get on the computer. They get on social media. There's no interaction. Yep. There's no – I know you've heard it, man. I know you've heard it, the whole talk Bill Cooper gets about people talking. How yep. media, starting with the radio. I know you've heard it too, Mr. LeBang, how the media started with radio. But still people would actually talk and they would do things even though they had the radio. And then, as Cooper said, and then come came TV. And it's all going downhill or something like that. Um, and then we have the internet. Man, if he could see, <clears throat> if, if, if he could see what the internet's become in this day and time. My lord. And so it's I'm separate. sure he had a clue. I mean, he was in the military. He probably had some, you know, and from what is top secret, um, classification, he probably saw some things like that. So Shane, you, let me, and I, I say this jokingly, and you and Mr. LeBang will both get this. So you don't feel, you don't feel any way threatened by coming on, uh, my show, myself being a Masonic disinfo agent. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the last week, last, actually the last two weeks is kind of funny. So, um, that one show we had that I had, the first show I had, first time I had you on the show, the only time, well, yeah, the only time live, uh, we got called Freemasons. And then, uh, actually last week, um, well, yeah, last week, well, last week or the week before is the same, same couple of people I came in there and trolled. Um, I am now a Muslim, I'm a Muslim, I guess. Yes, you're uh, a, Mus- a Muslim. I'm a Muslim atheist. You're yeah. a Muslim atheist Masonic disinfo agent, so. Shoot. And then, and then she looked at, uh, the, I have the, I have a vol- voluntarist poster behind me, and it's like, you see, it's like the V for Vendetta black and yellow thing. I'm sure you've seen it, but she, like, it's, it's, it's like, it's not the same, it's not like a pyramid, it's like an upside down pyramid, I guess you could say. And she's like, oh, you've got an Illuminati symbol on you, must be an Illuminati. <laughs> I was like, and this, this lady, like, she, like, she's, like die hard in the patriot community like constitution flags like all of that all of that like she's not even involved with that but that somehow like i, I we struck a, a such an emotion within her that uh um yeah i don't know but yeah i definitely know what you're talking about it happens which uh, and this is this all flows into a uh, point of conversation here um you i remember you know when i first met you you were big into bill cooper very big into bill cooper and everything but like myself you evolved into your own thing. You, you evolved into your own thing. I have met some people that they, they, they think that, you know, since I got into Cooper, I'm a Cooperite. And, uh, you know, or this or that, the other thing. It's, it's insane that you'll see people that are big time Cooper supporters. They'll slam Alex Jones 
and back and forth on the same thing. But at the same time, they become fanatics for their own side. And this is why – and I'm not going to name any names or people, but this is why when I was referencing these individuals – that um, were giving us a little headache. And also, Mr. LeBang knows about this because it's the same guy. <laughs> Mr. Hiram Abiff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same, yeah, Mr. Hiram Abiff. This um, has harassed me also. See, this is the problem. Everybody gets into I believe that even with Bill Cooper's work from the people, because sometimes you can make your own uh, sort of mind control. It all has to be about what this person said. How many people know that Bill Cooper, for most of his broadcast, was reading? Not many, oh, do they? Yeah. I, I, I figured so. At least half the time. Yes. But he was so, so good at it, you really couldn't tell when no, he was couldn't. reading and when he wasn't. So, yeah, it's it really is amazing how we all get put in boxes. And one thing um, that you as a young person are proud of, you have pulled yourself out of a box. And, you know, getting into Bill Cooper is not a bad box to get in. But oh, no, it, definitely definitely not. But that, I, I, I definitely think, uh, as he said, listen, everyone, read everything, believe nothing else, you get to substantiate in your own research. I mean, um, I, I, I don't listen to Bill much anymore, hardly ever. Um, but I, I definitely do. Uh, um, part of the reason I'm here today is from, from, from him kind of uh, – um, I guess uh, putting that idea of freedom in my head. Yeah, people. Um, but after that, I, I, I kind of I, I expanded and I started mm-hmm. looking into other things. And um, it's it's I don't see it as a bad thing at all. Um, no, no, not at all, not at all. I I talk about the mystery schools, but I, but they all relate. Everything. I think, relates. That, I think that was Bill's purpose. Is he wanted to start everybody down the road? He didn't want you to be him. He wanted to just start you off. And that, and when he gave you the mystery schools and when he brought out other things, it was, he gave you just enough to what you can handle and it puts you on a road. And then you go from there. Yeah, just enough to get you interested so that you start doing your own research. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. I, and they, but we can't make gods. People with Alex Jones, with Bill Cooper, with many individuals, they make gods out of them. It's this whole godhood that they, they can never, you can never surpass. But you can make triples out of them. Yes, <laughs> you make triples out of them, but you can never surpass them. This is the idea, and that's one problem when I was referencing that individual um, that we were talking about, that, mm-hmm. that were Masonic disinfo agents. Um, they never get past it. Someone asked me about it the other day. I said, dude, I'm, I surpass <laughs> – and, and I know it may – I know uh, – I've told, I've told people this before, and sometimes it rubs them the wrong way. Uh, I said, Cooper got me looking into this stuff, and in my opinion, the te- the student surpassed the teacher. That That's just my opinion. The student surpassed the teacher on what he was doing. I, I'm I'm a nerd, man. I'm a nerd with a high retention rate for stuff I read. Mm-hmm. So um, it, that's what you should do. Shouldn't any teacher want people to surpass them? That's what Bill wanted people to do. He knew people would look deep in all this stuff. He wanted them to. He didn't want them to sit down and say, oh, Cooper, he was – he was martyred, and blah, 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 and the New World Order killed him because he was talking about 9-11. That's all these people can talk about. That's yep. all they can talk about. They can't really say, you know, he talked about this. Let me look deep into this. I've got tons of books that this guy was getting into, and he just gave you the snippet. He gave you little snippets, a little cusp of what the whole process was. I know he read the whole thing. Hopefully he wasn't just picking parts out of books and reading them. He read the whole thing before he got into it, which if you listen to him, he the way he read, he read this stuff a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you can just tell no when someone, about. Yeah, you can tell when someone's reading something, if it's the first time or not. He read all this stuff a lot. So um, so I think it does get into an insanity. Many people with Alex Jones, many people with Cooper. Listen to these guys if you want to, but at the same time, listen to me if you want to. Listen to Shane, listen to Mr. LeBang, but at the same time. Surpass. I think that should always be our goal to surpass in knowledge, teach it to others, and expect them to surpass beyond us. That is, and that goes back to what we were talking about with children. It should be ideas that are true, original thoughts that we pass to the children, that they pass to theirs. And I believe this is one way because I think we have a multi generational thing that we have to fix, and it's going to take multi generations. Oh, yeah. One way to fix it is to fix the children. Fix the children. Uh, you know, my son's 21. He does his own thing. But I hope by, you know, hearing what I say and stuff, it sticks in his head. It sticks in his head. He knows that his father is basically, without calling an anarchist, a freedom, a freedom loving jackass. He knows I am. <laughs> and I am, and I'm, I'm, I'm both parts, man, equally. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can. I think John, uh, John's dropping out though. He's reconnecting. 
And I see, okay, that's just him. I was making, I was making sure I saw Skype doing some, you know, little circle-y thing. Yep, 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 yep. Make sure that, are we still connected to, yeah, there we go. Yeah, all right, he'll call, he'll call back. Drop that. All right. I got wireless issues today for some reason. Usually it's just like on fire today for some reason. I reposition my computer so it, uh, I, I see like there's one bar missing, so forth and so on. So, <clears throat> so sir, what's in the future for you? I'll quit talking about it. I'll quit talking about myself. What's in the future for what going on with Liberty Under Attack? We got about five, six minutes left. Okay. Um, well, um, I've had plans to expand the show for, for a while now. Um, and, uh, like I, I mentioned, I'll be going, I'll be starting school, uh, indoctrination, uh, higher level indoctrination full times to come, uh, come next spring. Um, I'm only doing, I'm only taking a, like half a, half a semester now or half a class, uh, class load, but I do want to expand. There's a lot that we have to talk about. Um, so I, I picked up two more co-hosts. One of them is a really proficient Austrian economics, um, things like Mises and Rothbard. Um, and, uh, the other one is really big into survivalism. Um, we can talk about that stuff all day. So we, we picked up a couple of additional co-hosts, um, so we can have, uh, if I can't make it, there's still people there to keep the show going. Uh, in January, one thing I, I always hear, um, fr- from folks, whenever you, whenever you tell them like, uh, oh, voting doesn't work or, um, oh, you know, running for office doesn't work or signing, writing, writing, uh, letters to your congressman doesn't work. They're like, well, then what do I do? And uh, at the beginning, when I started Liberty Under Attack, I, I really didn't know. I really could, I didn't really have any answers. It was just like, well, education's the first step, so let's start there. Uh, but now there, there are a lot of things that can be done. I kind of went over the, some of them, uh, some of them earlier. The, the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action. Come January, um, for a full two months, we're going to go into each one of these, uh, each one of these various facets, and tell the listeners. Um, what they can do, how they can do it, and we're going to have, be having on a, a lot of great people um, for for interviews, people that that do this stuff uh, all day, every day in their lives, twenty four seven. So that's probably the biggest thing is uh, we're going to get people solutions. Um, now, um, some of them may not be viable, but some of them are. Um, so we're and instead of making the decision for our listeners um, and for what's best in their lives, we're gonna we're going to re- just give them the information, and they can decide what uh, what one of the one one or a few of these things is works for them. Um, and uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, there's a lot of talk about grievances, and there's definitely a time and a place for that. There's definitely a time and a place to kind of to to discuss the grievances, um, but there's also a place or a place in time uh, for solutions. And uh, that's kind of what uh, um, we're going to start focusing on come January. Um, finishing out this month, we've got some more interviews with some interesting people. I'm going to be talking uh, to one of the guys interview at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest who uh, um, just built it. He just uh, came out with uh, – he programmed his own uh, – um, he, pro- he made his own program. It's called Meta Market, and it's supposed to create a uh, um, a decentralized free market. So I'm not sure how that's going to go, but he's a programmer. I'm um, going to be uh, interviewing uh, some other – um, some other, uh, some other interesting people. Um, that might kind of release at this time, but, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot in store, uh, over at, uh, Liberty Under Attack. And, uh, if you guys want to tune in, uh, it's, uh, every 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, um, every Sunday at 6 p, er, <laughs> whoops, at fbrnradio.com. Um, and, uh, um, Robert, I was, was a lot of fun. A lot of fun coming on here. I appreciate him. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Last few minutes we have here. Throughout history, but the 1700s, 1800s, and even some of this uh, previous century, 1900s, we see that there are many that go around. I was talking about this in the beginning of the show. They allegedly proclaim they want freedom, un- access to all kinds of knowledge. It's all about love. It's all about toleration. But we know there are those that use these ideas so that when they sweep away the previous paradigm – They take care of the new one, and there's really nothing involved that has to do with freedom or knowledge or love or toleration. So do you – are you suspect? I I think that you know history, we can get in – people think it's all a conspiracy thing, but history shows us this happens. History shows us there's always some infiltrator in there that's going to make sure and screw things up. He's going to make sure and lead lead people by their – like a a bull by the nose ring straight to slaughter. But they tell the bull the whole time, you're going to be free. You're going to pasture. <laughs> yeah. But you're going to wide open fields, strawberry fields, forever. You know, you're going to be, um, it's all going to be, you know, happy and joy. So 
I am, I just ask you this. Mm-hmm. And I also, if I can give some advice, watch out who you're around. Oh, watch out who you're around because there are going to be plenty of people that proclaim this. There will be plenty of individuals that will proclaim this, but some of them, some of them won't go far enough. and they, they just like to proclaim it, but some of them are speaking out of one side of their mouth. But in the rooms without windows, they are speaking what they actually believe. This is historical. This mm-hmm. has happened. So if I can, you know, watch out. Keep yep. your keep your eyes open for a lot of these people. Uh, watch what they're doing, and and I think you're you're a smart pe- you're a smart guy. You can probably start picking out someone that has something's not right with them. Oh yeah, something's de- just qu- something's just not quite right, and it's those little specific moments with things they say and do that you'll see this. Oh, of course, of course, and and, and that's why. Um and the, the people you're kind of referring to are the syndicalists. They talk about wanting to abolish the state, but then they want to set up their own little communes. Like, it's, it's communism. It's a contradiction of terms. Um, but that's why I, I believe in, in the individualist anarch, anarchism, um, which means that I don't follow anyone and uh, anyone. Like, it's it's just it's just me, myself. There's no um, – uh, what I kind of go off of is uh, what I research, what I learn, and uh, what I th- and, and I always run it past the test of the two principles. Is this aggressing upon somebody? Is it initiating force? Um, and then also, is this violating someone's uh, someone's self ownership? Um, it's it's just a great uh, um, it's a great yardstick to have uh, the non aggression principle and the axiom of self ownership. Um, but yeah, I, and that's definitely something to look out for. It's it, it doesn't seem like it's as much of an issue uh, within the uh, volunteerist community, but. Um, it definitely could be. So, um, again, Robert, I want to thank you for having me on. It was uh, it was definitely it was definitely a great time. Oh, thank you, sir. And tell once again before we're off here, tell people where they can find Mr. Shane Radliff. Yep, uh, the website is libertyunderattack dot com. Uh, we are on a, at fprnradio dot com every Sunday at six p.m. Central Standard Time. I would definitely love to uh, have you guys over there as well. Dan, I need you to since you didn't before the show. I need you to go to my website and get your permission slip to, so that you could come on here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. I'll get. I'll get it. I'll get it signed by. I'll get it signed by Daddy. Please, King. Please, King. Give me permission to eat, marry, and live. Yes, indeed. Thank you, sir. You have a good one. Thank you. You too. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Waking Up the Masses. Don't forget, coming up next, you have the Kev Baker Show. So make sure and tune into that. I will. I'm going to be in the process of moving next week. I'll be in the process of moving next week, so I will probably not be here on Monday. Probably not be here on Monday, maybe Tuesday, but you will definitely have me on Wednesday. I'll be coming to you from, oh, from Florida. So until then, take care. Kev Baker coming up next. We'll see you guys. <laughs>